Amit Singh, welcome to the show! Your name is not very TV-ish. It should be like... That's worse eh. This one with no future. I decided I wanted to do a proper job. Maybe become a teacher. The idea was me with four Japanese girls. Wow. <laughs> With us today is comedy legend, actor, host, TV personality. He's the best in Singapore, JB, and some say Batam. <laughs> Gummy Singh, welcome to welcome, the show! Welcome, welcome. Hey. He got that right, you know, because a lot of people try to do that. Uh. Best in Singapore, Batam, JB. Uh, sorry, how is it now? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the rare few who got that. Yes! Phrase. Please put this into my appraiser. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for a quick introduction, right, you're a yeah. household name that is most well known yeah. for your role as Pachukang, as yeah. well as being the host for our NDP as numerous. Many, many New Year's Eve countdown times. shows. Wow, twenty. He holds wow. the record. Twenty amazing. Yeah, Joki is gonna beat me soon. Yes. He's trying. He's, he's trying. trying. Yeah. How many is he done? We need to know. I think Joki is twelve. Twelve. 12. 12. Mm. Comment. Mm. Long way to go. Twelve. Uh. And you've also hosted many, many other shows, acted in multiple local movies, and even directed in recent years. I Beyond am. that, you are even the face of public education for things like <laughs> SARS. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't know who it's for. Yeah. I think it's true, and even represented <laughs> Singapore to help with diplomatic situations. Yes. What? Today, yeah, yeah. we are quite curious to get into all of that as well as who is Gamit beyond what we see on TV. Mm. Well, I'm actually Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one Indian. But you're not out of the closet yet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> In our research about you, right, there actually seems to be quite an interesting gap where it was yeah. between your first TV hosting gig for the Live on 5 reality show yeah. to all of a sudden having a show named after you, Gamit's World. So there could was you- a gap? What do you mean there's a gap? So it almost was like you went from hosting and then all of a sudden you had your own show. Sure. Mm. Like how, how does it come about that you get a show name after you? Well, I slept with, no. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was after I did my first uh, Life on Fire show, mm. that went on for two seasons, uh, then we went on to do a sitcom called Can I Help You? Can I Help You? Ah. Oh. Ah. And that was uh, sponsored by Easy Turn. It's a department store based uh, sitcom and I am the manager for the store. Uh, oh. That didn't really take off because my character was so damn not funny. Right. <laughs> really, table read, I, I read and read and read. Then I wrote to the writers, where's my punchline? Mm. Then they said they've been told that Gurmit, the brand, cannot be tarnished. Oh. Yeah, cannot m look too uh. mischievous, too pervert, too whatever. You know. and I said, but that's not funny then. Yeah. So luckily it didn't go very long. <laughs> and then <laughs> next thing you know, I have the other shows that came. Mm. And you know, talking about shows, with my name on it. I have a story about that if you want to know, want me to tell you that. Of course. Yes. Okay. In my first <laughs> few months, when I was doing Live on Five, right? Uh, call up to the management office and they said, mm. you know, you're doing very well. People love you. The mm. ratings are good and all that. Uh, and that time I hadn't signed a full-time contract. So we'd like to offer you a full-time contract, but we have some issues, some concerns. If you could, you know, address that, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I said, well, okay. Uh, so just one thing actually, uh, your name. So mm. I, I said, my name, why, what, what's wrong with my name? Your name is not very uh, TV-ish. Ah. Oh, they so wanted that, you to have a stage name. Yeah, you know, like Elton John is not really Elton John, <laughs> which I understand, but that's very <laughs> more, right? Singapore, got, uh, Singapore, Kitchen is called Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, so what name should I have for TV? They said, well, we look at you and we think it should be like, Chris. Oh, <laughs> oh. that's worse eh. Yeah. And then they even give me my, my surname. Uh, <laughs> Chris Tan. <laughs> Chris <laughs> <Crystal> Ball. <laughs> he said, Chris D'Souza. So suddenly I become a more. Oh. 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 Yeah. Uh. So I, I said, wow, uh, I mean, with all due respect, uh, there are two reasons why I can't do this. Number mm. one, what if I'm on the street and people call Chris, 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 and I don't know, I forgot, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Chris, well, Chris, I'm down, no? I'm proud. No? But secondly, more importantly, is that my, my parents gave me this name. So I feel it's a slap in their face if I change my name just for stardom mm. and yeah. work. So I say in good conscience, I cannot accept the contract then. Right. So they say, okay, think about it first, think about it. No? Mm. Then a few days later, they say, okay, never mind, forget about the name, come in, sign up. So my, my balls are bigger. <laughs> yeah. so anyway, the, the irony is that after that show, after show, they use my name. So there was tonight with Gurmit, Gurmit Small Talk, uh, Gurmit's World, all yeah. the Gurmit, Gurmit came out. It could have been Chris World, tonight with Chris. I know, right? So I'm so glad I, I stood for that. And then, you know, the, the Indian community was so proud of me. You know, go to Sarang Road. Good bit! <laughs> you are! I love you! Because of you, uh, Indian is on the map, like. Indian on Singapore. <laughs> you are good, like you. You are so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Indian! <laughs> 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 
What? Oh, do you know I'm Indian? Did you know? I know, I know. Because some people come to me and say, "Oh, you're Indian." Is it? My name is Gamit Singh. Yeah, mm. I thought maybe like Malay, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gamit Ben Singh. Right. <laughs> no, speaking of which, are we actually pronouncing it right? Is it Gurmit or Gur- Gurmit? The Indian proper way to say is Gurmit. Oh. Ooh, is that what your parents call you, Gurmit? No, they call me idiot. So I'm coming. Are we brothers? Yes, but uh, Gurmit is how we pronounce it in Indian. Okay. But when I was promoted for my first show, Life on Five, which was a brilliant campaign. Usually they will do like a a commercial bit where they say between shows, they say, oh, coming uh, coming up a new show, what did and all that, starring Gamit Singh, that's it. Mm. But what they did was, which I thought was really launched my career, uh, during the commercial break, you will get just a, a close up shot, head shot only, and uh, maybe four or five person one by one saying, Hi, I'm Gamit Singh. Another one comes on, Hi, I'm Gamit Singh. Even a girl, Hi, I'm Gamit Singh. And then like four, then go. Then people are like, what? Mm. What was that about? So after a while, people like were buzzing like, who the hell is this Gamit Singh? <laughs> <laughs> so Life on Five, when we finally uh, start the show, the smoke machine all that, I come out through the arches and I come through and I say, Hi, I'm Gamit Singh. Whoa! Wow. Wow. Like, oh, man. <laughs> so it was next day, I couldn't walk on the streets because people were connecting, Hey, Gamit Singh! Yeah. Oh. That one, that one, that one. So it was a really good campaign. But what was that oh. sudden switch like? Like all of a sudden you almost couldn't go out in public without getting recognized, right? What was yeah. that like for you? It was difficult, it was overwhelming. I didn't expect the, the people to take me in so quickly. Mm. Uh, I was at the, I actually was at Isetan. Uh, <laughs> Still uh, this, yeah. <laughs> then uh, I was shopping for underwear, you know, because we also wear underwear. Yeah, that's true. No Contrary way. to popular belief. Are you a boxers guy or a brief guy? Don't ask me this not a question. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a thong guy. No, no, no. no, 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 no we have so much in common. <laughs> so I was looking at the, the shelf, right? Hey, if you have not heard, we just created a new daily catch up community. Yes, join so us. please join over there. We will be using it. Uh. Hopefully, y'all can help us test run whether this episode will get us cancelled or not. Uh, be part of that conversation where we'll be sharing exclusive content bloopers and uh, conversations that we really think some people should see but not everybody should see. We're going to try and uh, organize meetups as well because some of y'all have uh, commented that y'all hope that y'all can watch the episodes live and or be a part of the show and so we'll be having all that discussion over there so please join. So don't miss out. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description box down below and we'll see you. We can't wait. We cannot. Absolutely not. (laughs) In fact, our KPI depends on this. What will you do? What will you be doing in the community? I, me? Yes. Oh, I'll run polls for you guys. Oh, Interesting polls. questions. Correct, yes. correct. And um, um, what else? It's really, we should have planned this. Huh? Yes, we should, we have, should have, we should have. I, I blame John. Say we, we're going to wing this. I, they join ID? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wait, that's Dan. Dan uh. You can kick Dan out of the chat. Yeah, Dan, he, he needs to stop typing, sir. He's, He's the, the only person, person typing. Join Anthony us. <laughs> join Dan, actually. <laughs> Oh, Jared's here. Hey, what's up? Hi. Jared has joined the chat. So this is a sick, it's a company chat. <laughs> it's still a six of us. Six of us. <laughs> <laughs> I hear this uh, giggling going on. Uh, like, oh, somebody's having a good uh, Two, three giggles. And it seemed like they were giggling just behind me. So I turned around and there were three sales kill cashiers. And I, hello, come in, say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Then I turned around and I realized, wait, now I have to be careful about how I choose my underwear, right? <laughs> <laughs> what color, what pattern, what size. So I don't buy the cheapest mm. one. Yeah. yeah. No, but size but though. size, no. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. If I buy XL, they might think, no la, I bluff on all my thing. <laughs> I thought I cannot win this thing, right? So looking at the bookshelf, I slowly walk sideways, crap my way out of the Isetan. <laughs> it's very overwhelming. Right. Very overwhelming, yeah. But if I take a step back from try, try. already, <laughs> I need to <a> roll. <laughs> if you take if we take a step back, right, you were actually a performer at Hopa Villa for four years yes. before you kind of got scouted. Yes. And someone recommended you to go and try for TV, right? Can you tell us yeah. that story? It was during the four years when I was there and in Hopon Villa, which was a great training ground because we did ballet, we did lion dance. I was a lion backside, uh, we did <laughs> arms, uh, but we also did musical. That was my first uh, duty. So we do musicals, uh, we sing song, blah, 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 but we also did comedy theater where we have uh, people's uh, audience interaction. Mm. And on one of these shows, at the end of the show, uh, 
somebody came out and said, hi, I'm from SBC. That was SBC back then. Yep. Said, uh, you're very quick on your feet mm. because I had to, well, whoever's on stage with me, mm. I had to repartee, banter, and then laugh, make a crack a joke, and then get them to do what I need to do on stage. Mm. And they say, you will be very good for live TV. And I'm like, oh, thank thanks. you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's it. Lah. Then call. <laughs> and that was it. End of conversation, right? Four years later, uh, I got a call uh, from my sister. She says that, hey, um, my, my, my friend, whose friend, whose friend, whose friend is a producer <laughs> in SBC, would like you to come down for uh, an audition. So I said, oh. Then I realized was that, that producer, oh. she somehow managed to Remember find- Remember you. Yeah. yeah. So I went in for a live audition. The first one was at the taxi stand. They don't even go to the building, they're just outside the taxi stand. There's a camera. I sit down there and the producer says, can you talk about yourself 30 seconds? Oh, hi, oh. I'm going to be saying blah, 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 blah. Good. Now, can you look to your left and pretend that's a celebrity and interview that celebrity like he's here for the first time, blah, blah, blah. Mm. He's doing a concert. Oh, okay. Hi, hey, welcome to Singapore, blah, blah, blah. Finish. Okay, we'll call you. Don't call us. Yeah, great. Wow. Then after later, I get a call and say, okay, you've been shortlisted. Come in for screen test. Screen test is actually you go to the studio and you have the actual backdrop mm. and the cameras. Then you'll mm. see whether you have the chemistry, the camera. Because I tell you now, some people, they're model, they're beautiful in life. But when you go behind the camera, for some reason, the camera says, eh, bang. Yeah. Right. Does, there's no chemistry. It just falls mm. flat. Yeah. 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 It's not about beauty or not. It's just that, that exuberance, that, that X factor, they call it, right? The, yeah. the giving. So when I went there, there were a few tall, very handsome, well-built models, you know, long hair and all that. And then there were Whoa. beautiful, you know, flowing hair girls. And I said, wow, I felt like shit. I said, there's no way I'm gonna pass this, <laughs> this uh, audition. But I said, I'm already here, I give him a bad shot. So they put us on stage and they pair us up, different permutation. We have a script and then we look at the camera, we talk, blah, 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 we interact. And then we introduce the first item, that sort of thing. So again, don't call us, we'll call you. And then a few weeks later, they call me and say, hey, uh, good news, uh, you've been selected as the host for this uh, live show, Life on Five, mm. it was gonna be. I said, wow, that's awesome. I didn't think I have a bloody chance at all. So who's the co-host, the female co-host? No one. Oh, wow. Solo. So can you imagine I have no TV training and mm. now suddenly I have to host a one hour live show. Yeah. Every Monday night was a show. Every Monday night, I had diarrhea. Because <laughs> 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 the, so, the, the butterflies churn, yeah. you know, make butter, then pfft, come out. Yeah. It was a very steep learning curve. And back in the day, we didn't have ear mons, we didn't have teleprompters, we had scripts, we had to memorize the links. But because it's a live show, I have to be on my toes to either cut it short mm. or lengthen it. So for mm. example, before I go on air, the floor manager will come to me and say, hey, uh, we only got 20 seconds. Then I have to decide, is it enough or is it too much or mm. too little? Or the producer will, will tell me through the manager, hey, this link is a bit long, can you shorten it? Just like that. Wow. Mm. And I will always look at the camera and at the side of the camera with the floor manager. Right? And there are four cameras. So he has to, the camera, floor manager has to move around. <laughs> yeah, so we have hand signals back then. So if it's like that, extend it, we've got time. Mm. If it's like that, run it up, we have 30 seconds. Like that, 10 seconds, just right. last line and then go to the next thing or whatever you have to do. So there was one night where we finished a show and this was a fantastic show because the audience didn't have any seats. They were just standing there turning around because there were five different stages. Wow. Oh. And we had a band, we had a foreign artists, we mm. had movie review and we had miscellaneous stage, whatever you do with it, fashion yeah. show even. So it was really great. So at the end, we always feature a local band because we want to push our local uh, music scene. Mm. And when we finish, we'll ask them where you perform, where can we catch you? Mm. Oh, great, okay, then I, I get this, you know, 30 seconds, and I say, okay, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're going to uh, see you next week. Next week we have this, 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 this. And I'm about to say goodbye. So good night, everybody. Then I get this. <laughs> so good night, everybody. But before I go. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I started talking, and then I introduced the, the band again, and we had a little chit chat, banter with the audience who was right in front of the stage, and then we chit chat <laughs> for two whole minutes. Oh Whoa. my God. When the show was finally off air, then I asked the floor manager what happened. Oh, upstairs, the guy was keep, keep, keeping time. He underestimated by two minutes. Oh, oh my God. God. And we can't cut early because next thing is new. So we cannot like yeah. date, date, date What happens uh, if you just run with it? Bye-bye. Then you just run with it. What actually happens? I don't know. It's up to the producer to call, right? They might uh, keep shouting at me to please continue talking some more. <laughs> or they fine. might uh, play a lot of music and then cut to camera, cut to the audience. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I see but for two minutes, that's ridiculous. Yeah, right? Right, right. How long can the people wait yeah. for two minutes, right? So, so, guess maybe, yeah. so you, you, you obviously took on this because you were, this was part of what you were already trying to pursue? No, I always love entertainment, right? Yeah. It's because I have an infinity complex. I'm an introvert. Being in entertainment, whether I'm acting or hosting, allows me to be somebody I'm not. Okay. Uh, and it's not as scary, although mm. it's still nerve wracking, but as Gamit the person, 
I am sit quietly in the corner. I don't do these things. So then as a child, like what was that first experience that you had that showed you that this is an avenue or a platform for you to do this? It was in uh, secondary school. Uh, I used to be a damn mischievous boy, <laughs> prankster. And uh, even to the extent, if I made you cry, I don't care. No, <laughs> prank worked. So in secondary <laughs> one, <laughs> yeah. 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 I would have been a great YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> My KPI. Yeah. So in secondary one, you know, and just this new class, new classmates and everything, I played a prank on another guy. We were being quite good friends in the weeks that we came in and then made him cry, right? <gasps> so I went to the toilet, like very happy, <laughs> successful. <right>? <laughs> <laughs> then in a voice in my head said, if you keep doing this, you'll end up with no friends. Oh. Mm. And that shut me up. And I was like, wait, okay, that's true. Oh shit. So I realized then, then I declared to myself that I'm going to be a clown. I'm going to make people laugh, even if it means laughing at me at my expense, I don't care. So mm. in school, you do like, uh, you know, Teacher's Day, Children's Day, Youth Day, whatever, Hari uh, mm. concert, what have you. Every stage activity concert, I was up there, either as a host or as a dancer, as a singer. Mm. Uh, I was always there to make people, entertain people. Uh, that's sort of caught on and to the point where when I was in pre u still in Outram, uh, a teacher uh, from Scotland, she came to me and she said, you know, you're in a Scotland accent, which I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this Scotland accent, it always becomes Indian. <laughs> you, you, have have to to the, <laughs> you have to go to the performing arts school. Sound, to me, they sound Indian, no? yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You think about it. I mean, really listen to a Scottish and yeah. an Indian, and they're replaceable. Yeah. <laughs> so she said that uh, you should go to a performing school, art school, because you are really into it, and I can see you shine. And I said, yeah, but back in the day then, we didn't have a performing arts scene, and mm. the only way was uh, to go to New York or what have you. And I said, I come from a poor family. There's no way I can do this. Mm. Uh, so secretly, I always hope to perform somewhere. Mm. So when uh, I went to national service, a uh, good friend of mine said, hey, there's this MDC mm. that we can audition for. What's MDC? Music and Drama Company. So it's a unit uh, that performs for soldiers around Singapore mm. uh, to entertain them. Wow. Give them the Friday night, yay, and then they, they book out kind of thing. So I auditioned for it. I had to sing, I had to dance, I had to act, and then uh, I got it. And then I spent one year uh, as a performer in MDC. And because I was in MDC, uh, we sometimes get gigs outside of MDC. Right. Oh. Uh, and while one of these gigs, I was spotted by a manager and he was in the end, the manager for Hopa Villa. And he called right. me over, oh. join us mm. now. What mm. happens at Hopa Villa? Right now it's a place where they show you the, the 18 levels of hell, right? Yeah, yeah. What was it before? It was eight levels of hell too, but then we, we <laughs> spruce it up because we, uh -huh. we had rides, we had water rides, we had- Oh! oh. Meet, imagine Disneyland. But with Chinese but hell themed, hell themed <laughs> Chinese mythology, mythology oh, and all okay, that. So yeah. we had generals walking, we had dragon, oh, I see. we had lion, tiger, okay. you know, the horoscope, okay. uh, zodiac signs. And then on stage, we had a musical, for example, uh, the elements versus spirits. So I played water, you know, I did this because oh, I- Oh, yeah, wow, that's crazy, flexible, that's crazy. Yeah, 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 Oh, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> and then- uh, From this to the Kalam <laughs> <laughs> um, So we did those things and people come in, the, the amphitheater could hold uh, 2,000 people. We do a show for them three times a day and then on weekends, four times a day. Mm. On top of that, we do park walk as characters and people take pictures of us. So instead- It's really like Disney. It's yeah. like a yeah. yeah. Chinese version. Wow. That's all, yeah. exactly. And you know, the tourists will come in, hordes of tourists will come in. Um, but I only stayed there for four years because it was slowly- for four, Only stayed there for four years? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm called a legend. <laughs> Hell I know, I was there for the longest time. They called me the legend, but yeah. um, <laughs> I, started see, I started to see things deteriorating, you know, the welfare, the even the, the attendance of the audience. Right. Oh. Uh, the buildings were falling apart. There was no money coming in and I was getting, you know, like maybe I should get out of this now, mm. uh, which I did. And then went away for a while and then decided to pursue. I love singing the most. Uh, right. So I went to audition for bands. And finally, one manager saw me and said, okay, I'll put you in a band in Jakarta, we'll go there. Wow. So the idea was me with uh, four Japanese girls. <laughs> wow. And I'm the lead singer. Yeah. I, was, I saw the pictures and ha ha ha. Wow, that's a great deal. <laughs> Very that's, great that's deal. That's <laughs> <deal. laughs> <laughs> But they were obligated by contracts to stay in Japan. They couldn't break the contract. So, but the bookings in Jakarta have been done. Mm. So last minute she put together a band, uh, four other guys from Philippines. 
<laughs> youngest guy was 42 years old. Oh, oh no. Right. And then the tiger, you know, the, the pouch thing. Yeah. Uh, then the tree. audience that buy the ticket for this concert is like, yeah. <laughs> So the concert, we just went for club to club to club, you see. I only stayed for about a month because I couldn't hack the nightlife. It was strange. You you get up at six in the evening. That's oh. your morning. Mm, mm, mm. And then you walk all the way till six in the morning and then you go to sleep at 9 a.m. So I was like, my How body is- How old were you at that time? Wow, that's a good question. So 20, 24, I think, mm. 25. Right. So yeah. you were the lead singer? I was the lead singer still. Right, yeah. right. After one month I came back and then I decided that I want to go, <laughs> I decided I want to go to, to do a, uh, a proper job, right? Uh, maybe become a teacher. So I went to a MOE to sign up as a teacher because I love working with little children. To teach school. what subject? Anything, just be a teacher, right? Okay. So they go in and then MOE says, no, you can't. You have to take your math again because you didn't take math in A-levels. Yeah. So I said, what? No, I can't take math, I'll die. <laughs> uh, and then um, don't know what to do, don't know what to do. And then that's when I got the call, come in for audition mm. for Life on Five. Oh, thank right. goodness wow. they rejected you. If not, we well, wouldn't have oh, had- wait, Before that also, since the MOE rejected me, right? I decided, okay, the next best thing is I, I love uh, children, but I also love computers. I love playing games and all that. So let's get behind the scene and do what. And I found myself loving to do the coding, the programming wow. in the eighties. Yeah, so wow. I went to informatics and I was hoping to become either a, a system analyst or mm. a computer programmer, right? But in my first year while I was studying my, for my diploma, uh, I went in for the audition. And then when I got a diploma, they offered me the contract. Yeah. So I had to choose either or, right? And my wife who was my girlfriend then, she said, Let's do this two years, one year stint with mm. SBC. Doesn't work out, you can always go back to your studies. Mm. So that one year became 20 years. Uh. But the way you drop hops is insane. Uh, it's a little bit like, uh, like skills futures would <laughs> really, really look into this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like, I want to yeah, teach, yeah, yeah. but I don't care, teach what? You gotta yeah. learn math. I don't like math. Yeah. So now I'm going to do coding, <laughs> coding, but you don't like math. Then after that, I'm going to be actor. And before that, well, I worked in a team. I didn't park. choose the, the, hell, the acting hell thing. They, I mean, they came to me and they said, Come in for audition. Mm. And then I did the audition so well, I did the. The countdown show and then they say, okay, uh, you want to offer you a contract. I was like, oh, but I'm <laughs> supposed to finish my degree, but yeah. now I can't. Mm. Uh, but your parents, okay. It choose. was <laughs> interesting you should ask that because when I when I signed my contract, like I have a job now, right? I have a contract mm. and all these years, nothing. And then I went to my mom and said, hey, I joined joined the TV station full time. And you know what she said? What for? <laughs> <laughs> I said, for, 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 you know, performing and hosting. Yeah. This one got no future. In. After mm. one, two years, you know. but in, in <laughs> the first year, I became so famous, right? All the relatives, relatives start calling her, hey, mm. when is Gurmi coming over tea? And you know, all yeah. like that. Wow, she became very proud of me. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mother's flex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so throughout the entire time, where you started pursuing like entertainment and performing, mm. your parents weren't exactly like supportive? Not really, because they thought this job was a bit, uh, you know, flaky and it's not very steady a job. Yeah. You know, you mm. become an accountant or a dentist or a, even a librarian, you'd be more stable than mm. this, you know? And it's true to, I mean, to a point, I've, I've, I've come to realize that my job is very volatile. It's very dependent on people's opinion of me. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if you look at a dentist or a doctor, they have a certificate to show that they have done their due diligence, their education. <laughs> they can do what they claim to do. Yeah. Mm. I can't go to someone and say, actually, I'm quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they said, no, I don't think so. That's it. I yeah. cannot, yeah. Right? I cannot argue with that. Subject so I've always said that the TV station is not my paymaster. My paymaster is my audience. Yeah. Yeah. They are mm. the ones who give me a career and give me my livelihood. You mentioned about being an introvert and like entertainment allows yeah. you to be someone else that you're not. Does that still apply today? Like even in front of yeah. like these cameras? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not really the real gourmet, like even- no. If gourmet. you want the real gourmet, I'd be very quiet. Then your interview would be damn boring. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. No, no, but it'd be interesting. So like, like, does it like drain you even to yes, do like- it does. Right. Because, right. Okay, here's the thing. It's not a bad thing. I think because some people tell me it's because I always put in more value add. So if I see a script, if I see a hosting script or acting yeah. script, I don't just read the lines. I see where can I add something more? Where yeah. can I put value to it? Mm. And that needs this, right? Mm. Uh, doing a live show, doing a pre-recorded show, I want to give more than I have been given in a piece of paper. Mm. Uh, so in interview as well, I could just lay back. I've interviewed people who like, I want to kill myself. <laughs> 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 I can tell you don't want to be here. <laughs> I feel that that's so <laughs> bloody unprofessional and rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people have made time for you. People have made time for me, us to watch this show. So I've always had this mantra, the philosophy that because people are watching, I do not want to waste their time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've made the effort, so you bloody well also made the effort. And then I will, there are many times I finish a show or I finish an interview or I finish a photography and all that, I go back home on autopilot because I'm so damn tired. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it is what it is because I rather be that because I give so much than come home. Oh, I'm still so full of energy. I wonder why. Yeah. Do you have a favorite person you've ever interviewed? You. Wow, that's hard to say because there have been a lot of good people. Uh, um, Dustin Hoffman, I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, wow. I went to LA to interview him okay. uh, for Kung Fu Panda. Oh. And uh, he is such a playful guy. Mm. He's, he's, he's just, you know, take on the cameraman, take on the summon, and then he leads over to me and that guy is an asshole. <laughs> 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 uh, like, the other one was James Ingram. He has passed away now. Mm. Uh, but uh, I remember interviewing him for my show uh, Tonight with Gummit. Mm. And, you know, the artists will come in, they'll do a sound check, they'll sing the song, try it out and then sit down and get the bearings and everything. But we just started talking because I was there. I always want to meet my guests beforehand. So we have this, hopefully a chemistry before we, mm. we, we roll the tape. Yeah. Uh, people went for dinner and the both of us kept sitting down and talking and talking. Because the wow. first thing I asked him was, what happened to you? Because you were at your A game and suddenly you disappeared. I don't understand. Were you, were you not well? Did something happen? You know? And he said that he and Kenny Rogers are good friends, right? And one day we were sitting having a talk Kenny Rogers said, the biggest regret I have is not being there for my family. Ah. Mm. I miss every milestone you can imagine with my children and all. And that really disturbed James. And then he said, I made a made decision. I'm gonna stop, no touring, nothing. I'm just gonna be here for my kids. And then mm. when the kids were grown up, then he started again. And that's why he was in Singapore right. to do mm. the game. Mm. And we talked, and we forgot about dinner. And then the floor manager came in, producing, you're still here? And I said, yeah, we, it's, dinner is over. People are coming in. You need to go backstage now. Mm, right. uh, so he was a good guy. So yeah. how much of that, that James Ingram conversation influenced your reason to leave MediaCorp in 2014 to spend time with your family? Well, it wasn't just him. I've always been a, 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 a home body. Right. I love being at home. Uh, if you ask my uh, peers in, um, the station, they would tell you that I hardly turn out for parties and you know, hang out or supper and all that. I go straight home because mm. I love being home. I think because of my inferiority complex and my introvert nature, I like to just you know, dial back a bit. If I don't have to, I don't have to, then I might as well go back. So people will be, well, I, I've, I've heard people call me names like, uh, you know, party pooper, that kind of thing. Like <laughs> Poop your face and you know. And, you know I, just, I just joke it off. You know? cool so when I do go to a club, right? So when I text my friends, say, hey guys, uh, tonight let's uh, go to Zoo. They're like, oh, come in, come in Zoo, okay. <laughs> call everybody. Everybody, yeah. everybody would, and then, then my friends would say, okay, okay, okay. My wife said can go because you're going to Zoo. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> talked about having an inferiority complex, right? Yeah, yeah. at the same time, very yeah. okay to uh, say, oh, leave me alone, I'm going home. Yeah, um, yeah. Reject people's plans. Yeah. How do you reconcile that? It feels like- Right, I, I know. Your so, words and action don't match up. Yeah, so that's where the dilemma is, right? So like people come in and they know how extroverted I am and they're thinking, oh, he's gonna be the party or the party animal, let's bring him out. And then suddenly I commit saying, says, no, I'm gonna go home. Like, huh, what, we don't match. Mm. So I come up with the excuse like, oh, I'm tired, or I got a headache and all that, just so I can sort of step back without insulting them. Right. I, of course, after that, I feel bad about it. Uh, I still, the, yeah, yeah, I do, I do, because I, I wish I could please everybody. And that's yeah. why I, I, I know I cannot please everybody all the time, but I try my damn hardest. Today, I still uh, have that infinity complex, but not as bad as before, because there was one day I, did, I realized that if I think, because I thought I was very ugly, I thought I was like worse than uh, Quasimodo, the hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh my God. I look okay. at the mirror, I look like, what the, you know, is this? So I even broke up with my second girlfriend, because I said, when I go walk in Orchard Road, it's essentially Beauty and the Beast. I feel people staring at me and say, like, what is this guy doing with this beautiful girl? This guy, asshole, right. get off the stage. When I was hosting Miss Singapore Universe, right? Uh, I'm very comfortable at bantering with the judges, bantering with the girls, yeah. because I want to make them feel easy, then they can answer, you know, at ease and answer the questions and all. But in my mind, while I'm looking at the audience, right, my mind is saying, hey, asshole, you think you're so good looking at? You know, you right. don't know the girl next to you, she couldn't, she couldn't be further away from you if she was on the moon. Yeah. You are such a, you're such a pitiful bastard. You shouldn't even be on stage, you know. That's crazy. And at yeah. a point, and you've at the same time, I'm still it. talking. Yeah. yeah, I'm still talking now. So I did that. I did that hosting two years, right? And the second year was even harder. So I went to artist management in Medical and I said, "Hey, I went to the manager. And I said, this is what's happening in my head, and I don't think I can do it a third time because I don't know what stupid thing I'll do on on yeah. TV." And she was shocked because she didn't know. Not many mm. people know that because yeah. right? I didn't want people to be burdened with that knowledge. And I I said, "Yeah, if you could just not have me there." I really am so uncomfortable. I, I really want yeah. to eat shit and die. Um, so they did, they, to their credit, they took me out. Um, so even now when I do my movies, uh, even when I was doing Poitou Kang, right? 
you know, in studio, we shoot a scene and then director says, cut. And then they watch a playback, right? People rush and see, oh, I never do that. Mm. I, can't mm. af- I can't afford to watch myself because I've become very self-critical. Yeah. So I've never watched Portugal show except for three episodes, which was when they announced it was gone to Netflix. I mm. thought, oh, okay, which mm. episode did they choose? And I thought, okay, these are the episodes, but I can't remember what I did there. And it was during COVID. So I thought I'll just have a watch, you know? And true enough, uh, while I thought it's classic, it can still uh, stand Hold the test of time, yeah. but I was still like, this part could have done, you know, mm. that, oh, that part Very could have- critical. Wow, oh, that's like 20 years yeah. later already. Yeah, still. Oh, so wait, so that means during the entire time that PCK was airing, you didn't watch no. the episodes ever? No. But I mean, in a way I did because I was there, right? Acting, but I don't like you didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting wow. that, that none of the fandom circumvented any of that because it was huge. It's such a big show, like yeah. really in, in Singapore, Malaysia, yeah. Samsei Batam, like yeah. that didn't circumvent yeah. any of the, the insecurities. No, it didn't. I, I still felt I wasn't good enough. I still felt I could do better. And uh, and wow. what did though? Because I feel like there are many people that also have this kind of imposter syndrome or yeah. have a low self uh, yeah. impression of themselves, right? Yeah. And these are also people that have not become household names in yeah. the region. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you ha- having become national icon and, and whatnot, right? Whether yeah, or not you actually believe the, when we the say that. With what you come. Uh. They should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what was it though within your life that helped you become a little bit more comfortable with mm. yourself? I think it's just sheer endurance and perseverance. Just keep going at it. You yeah. know? I think even athletes would feel like, okay, if I'm running as fast as I can, but I still can't make the time. Uh, Michael Jordan, he was told he can never amount to anything, but he mm. went on to shoot 10,000 hoops yeah. every day. He shoot, shoot, shoot until he reached 10,000. So after a while, you, you have that little glimmer of hope mm. and you hope to God that that's enough. Mm. Uh, and then you just deliver. So for me, the, one of the reasons why I feel tired also is because I, I, whatever I do, I give my all and a beyond. So that at the end of the day, when people say, you know, that show wasn't good. I say, yeah, I agree with you, but at but least- I didn't watch it, to be honest. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. So I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Why, 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 you watch it? I didn't watch it, why should you watch? <laughs> no, but then at, at the end of the day, I know that I have given my all. Mm, and yeah. there's something that I can't, nobody can take away from me. Yeah. Mm. So I think maybe that's why I work so hard in mm. delivering the best I can uh, to my, I, I may be better later on, but at that time I had this skill set. I, I sound, sound like Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> I <will> find you. <laughs> and, and, and just do it, you know. Uh, so for those of you out there who are struggling with your internal struggles, but also trying to deliver something, at the end of the day, just do your best. I tell my children too, I say, I, your exams and all that, you can get 10 upon 100, but if you told me, Dad, I struggle, I gave my best, I think you're a champion. Mm-hmm. As opposed to you're 90 and you didn't struggle, and then you have an asshole attitude, mm-hmm. I'd rather disown you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. A bit trusting. Yes, yeah. Skeptic. There's a lot of energy. Adopt. You Come also on. shared a bit about on the note of grades, right? That back then in school, you did struggle with your academics. Yeah. So, yeah. What was it? Was it also the factor that you realized that you cannot really study, right? You just need to look for something else that you are good at to do. Yeah, I was, every time we, since primary school, every time we come home with a report card, uh, my two younger sisters would be the top 10, uh, top 10 in the class and sometimes top 10 of the whole cohort. Wow. Mm. I will be also top 10, but from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my late mom once said, you know, why are you like that? Uh? Why can't mm. you be as clever as your sisters? So I, I said, I jokingly said, yeah, because I left my, my clever genes back in your womb, mom. That's why they are clever and not clever. <laughs> but you always disturb me. Because they're younger than you somehow. Yeah, and it, I was like, why can't I get it? And then over the years, then I realized, and now I, I talk to students in school and tell them that, you know, your, your studies are meant for a certain group of people who will go this pathway and these subjects do not relate with you. So you, of course, cannot, it's like asking the fish to walk. Yeah. yeah, you only can swim in water. If it's in a water school, it will swim like shit. You know, mm. you ask a sheep to swim in the water, it can't swim. Yeah, but it can provide wool. So everybody has his own gifts, yeah. and you need to. Some people will hopefully find that early in their life, but sometimes they just have to keep trying different things, and then one day they find it. Suddenly, finally, they settle in an environment and say, "Ah, this is where I'm gonna be. Mm. Maybe not great, but still, this is where I can put something on the table. I can contribute." Mm. And, and that's what you, I can only hope for yeah. like, for you. It, it does feel like I, the, I, there's this missing part that I don't understand, right? When, especially in this last few weeks where we've met icons like yourself or people mm. that greatly contributed to the art scene within Singapore, that it feels as though last time it was a very restricted time and not many, uh, not many avenues, entertainers don't make money mm. compared to now, but it does feel like back then, 
we've we've had so ma- so much more people with conviction to succeed with the balls to try different things like kuma with attempting drag or just going up on stage doing stand up when yeah. someone asks him to do it and, and yeah. for yourself as well what do you feel is is different from i want to entertain people in the past versus i want to entertain people now because you look at today there's so many avenues to entertain yeah. people and when people say oh i want to entertain people for a living they end up being social media personalities yeah. right yeah. but in the past with the absence of that when i want to entertain people I, I, we look at the last four people we've interviewed and it's already yeah the thing, so the, varied. Yeah. the thing that in the past right it was harder for us to be noticed mm. Mm. now everybody with the handphone is a director, a comedian, a fashionista, a critic, a movie reviewer, everything they yeah. want to be. Whether they're actually that is another thing altogether. Yeah. But it sort of strokes the ego that now I have this tool. In the past, I have to hire a team to go to a studio, record a song, put it on a tape, give it to a producer who knows somebody who knows somebody and hopefully mm. that person will actually press play to listen. Mm. Yeah. Might not even listen, no, that's the thing. Mm. It was harder, no access, hard any access. But now everybody uh, can be the next star, which is great too, because there are some people who didn't have the connections, you know, to mm. somebody who could help them launch a career. But because of this platform now, whatever platform they're on, Anna, they can start the buzz and then somehow you'll get that higher, higher, much higher chance for that eventual person to see, listen, yeah. what they're doing. But on the other hand, I think some of the people have uh, deluded to think that because I have the tool, I must be a star then. Yeah. Mm. And this was pretty evident when I was doing uh, the hosting for Singapore Idol. Uh, you know, I, we would do the auditions and one by one come in and there was this group of three people and I was told in my ear, hey, go to level something at Suntec and then there's these three who are, who are protesting that they were not correctly uh, recognized and auditioned properly. Mm. So I walked over there with camera and there were three of them on there, <laughs> three young, young adults, right? I said, hey guys, I heard you, you guys went to audition and you all, uh, didn't make it and what's what's happening and you're not happy with that. Yeah, go ahead, come on, I don't understand, man. I mean, I've seen worse singers and they, 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 they get in and then I'm like, I'm good, I sing. And then, so, so what are you? I'm a nursery, uh, kindergarten teacher, I'm a student, I'm a this, I said, okay, okay, guys, okay. Uh, so I've, give, I've been given the authority to listen to you and if if I like you, I think you have a chance, you can go back in again. Okay. Well, there's so much stress. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so I said, uh, okay, so can, can you sing a song? Yeah, yeah, okay, can we we'll sing a song for you? Okay, okay. And it was so bloody off key, my God. No, but your face maintained. It's not melodious. Your face I just like, I was very, I had to be truthful to them. I said, guys, I love you, but no. <laughs> <laughs> for the second time. I, I no. I, I, yeah, 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 you a bit bitchy, you know, a bit bitchy, you know. I, I'm so sorry, I can't. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> well, <I didn't> <laughs> <laughs> you see how, how the, the it, I don't blame them too because first of all they have lousy friends who have never told them that mm. you guys go be a computer yeah. programmer <laughs> you know, yeah. don't be a singer like librarian yeah yeah be a librarian but also that because they, they put it on on social media and then maybe they got five likes or 20 likes you know or mm. they had robots that push them a bit and then they suddenly feel like yeah I'm the next Beyonce mm. I'm the next Robbie Williams you know that, mm. I would love to find that clip of them getting rejected yeah. 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 you think it's there no never made air no, no, it 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 was that. Oh, I see, if I see. it was me, I might have laughed. I don't think I'm the, I can have that level of professionalism. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'll just let them pass it. There was a guy who came in, right? And you always walk to the X marks the spot and you go, hi, I'm so and so and so. What are you sing for? I'm missing this song, blah, blah, blah. This guy, as he walks into the room, he started singing um, Better Man. Mm, Say someone Williams. to love me, right? Mm. But he said wrong words. Oh, mm. Something want to love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he just keep walking. That's your name first. Something want to love. Until today, he haunts me. No, something want to love. <laughs> So um, <laughs> we, we a couple of weeks back, we actually had Joe Kim on the show, ah. and he shared a lot about you with us. Yeah, and he really, really oh, looks up to you and whatnot. And, and he actually shared a memorable shoulder, shoulder. moment. On Singapore and, Idol. Yeah, and he told his side of the story. So we actually want to now hear oh. your side. Ooh. Do you kind of know what I'm talking about? I don't know, because my memory is damn lousy. Even oh, better, you can make hurt, it up. Joachim, you don't Wait. remember. Wait, let me first, just <laughs> before we go into that, let me just tell you how bad my memory is, right? 
It's because I have so many scripts to go through, whether I'm mm. hosting, acting, uh, whatever. I need to be able to learn the script on the spot like that. And then within uh, three minutes, I know the script by heart and I do my spiel, I do my acting and then I'm done. So my brain has learned that when the next script comes, this old script, throw away, yeah. mm. clear RAM, oh. right? And then do that, which is great. That's why I carry a picture of my family just in case I forget. <laughs> yeah. the day. And I also will forget people who haven't got in touch with for say uh, two to four weeks. For example, Miss Singapore Universe, right? Mm. Uh, semi-finals, there are 30 names. Yeah. I memorized the 30 names. Wow. Mm. Uh, no, 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 M1, F1 is there, F2 is there, F3 is there. And then later when we were taking a break, uh, about five, six girls came over and said, wow, can be saying your, your memory is so good. You memorize our names. I said, oh, wait, wait, wait. I said, before you give me too much credit, <laughs> yeah. I want you to know that now I memorize your names already. But in a few weeks time, if I don't see you, mm. I won't remember you at all. Yeah. Ah, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I went to the hospital, hey, nurse, I'm bleeding. Hey, come inside! <laughs> um, I do sure. feel like that to a certain extent is a true story. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Right. Really. Um, okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a few weeks later, I'm at the Channel 5 event, right? I'm sitting in the, in the club and then uh, managers are bringing in people, the people I know, and then suddenly they bring about four girls uh, I've never seen before, they sit next to me. And then they like, you all look for me, look at me. Then I look at them. <laughs> then there's this awkward silence, like some expectation or like yeah. some mm. of, of recognition. Nah, I, I. Then one of them said, he said, oh, it's true, you weren't lying. I said, so, uh, sorry, what? Oh, the same girl. Oh, I said, what? Yeah. Oh. Wow. So they said, you told us this, we're from Miss Singapore Universe, you told us this. I said, yeah, yeah, I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh so anyway, God. so. Now yeah. that's set up, okay, what okay. is this joke? We're cutting the open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, help, me, help me out because I cannot remember Joaquim. <laughs> <Jokin's laughs> <laughs> I will establish uh, who Joachim Gomez is because you don't remember him. I do, I do. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's the orchid flower, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Joachim. 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 <laughs> so during, during Singapore Idol, the producers made up a, a ship moment. Uh, basically, they paired him up with another contestant so that okay. people will Ooh. try and start Root rumors them, about them yeah. and then it's mm. for good TV, right? Yeah. Yep. And then there was that one moment because when she was eliminated, he was asked, how would you feel? Like, mm. what, what are you going to do now, now that she's gone? And yeah. he gave a very lame answer lah, like, I'll go home or, you know, I'll try my best or something like uh -huh. that. And to him, that was the best he could do at the time. Yeah. And yeah. old Joakim really was quite lame lah, we have to be honest here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> not now though, Joakim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's grown, he's grown. And yeah. so when he was backstage and you are, to him, he's always looked up to you. You're right. And one of the first few things you said to him backstage was, you looked at him, you pointed at him and then you raised your voice and then you repeat, go home. Mm -hmm. Heard that. Mm. And then you just kind of walked away. I, I forgot what the exact line you said. Right. You just kind of repeated the very lame thing that he said and just kind of insinuated that he has wasted that moment. Like prepare, right. prepare for this moment. Mm. Right. And right. I, I want to say I agree with you because the moment he said, he told us the story of what yeah. he answered yeah. before, yeah, you, all before like, you even came about, we were already like, oh, yeah, you yeah, can't really you waste that, right? everybody's time already. I do not remember. Do you remember this. that? No, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> at all. No. I was like a big, I, all I remember is I was like a big brother to a, a lot of the idols there and they would come to me and I remember uh, Hadi Mirza mm. yeah. came to me and this was the uh, uh, top five. And he came to me, hey, can, we, can I talk to you for a while? I said, sure, yeah. Went to the side uh, corridor. I I can't do it. Lah. I said, what do you mean you can't do it? I, I, I don't, I think I'm losing it. I don't think I can perform. I don't think I can, I can, I, I'm, it's so muddled up and all that. So I asked him, is your mom here? I said, yeah, my mom is here. Sing to her. That's all you have to worry about. Just mm. sing to her. Wow. Make her proud. Wow. Mm. And he sang. Right. Hair standing. So, so this story you remember lah? Yeah. The joking one. The fact I just said, ha! And then I went home. <laughs> I went home and I said, me like, maybe you were not talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the story you shared with me because uh, when I was uh, still in Hopa Villa, I did a countdown show at Raffle City foyer. Raffle City Shopping Centre, it was converted right okay. to a countdown show. He was maybe eight, nine years old only. He showed Whoa. me a photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he showed you the photo. Yeah. yeah. And, wow. me there, and he said that that was a pivotal moment for him to say, I want to go to entertainment and be like him. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Then many years later, uh, we took a photo, same photo, <laughs> same mm. post, you know, uh, about a few years ago. Yeah. 
Uh, that one I remember, but the home I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not go home. Uh. We gotta find out what yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've hosted so many of these New Year's countdown as well as the NDP, right? What yeah. was the first time hosting NDP like for you? Ah, uh, that was interesting because the first time I was hosting it was when I was still in uh, Hopa Villa, mm. and because we were tied in with our lion and our tiger mascot, we got a slot in there to come in there and do Chan Mali Chan kind of oh, thing, oh, right? Mm. Uh, and then they got me as the co-compare. There were already four there. There was, I think, uh, Leslie Pile, uh, uh, oh shoot, I've got your name now. Uh, <laughs> you know me. Yeah, 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 you get excuses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Back in the day, right, it was a music stand, script there, and it was very on the side. Can't even see the compares, and they will be very monotonous. It was go like, and now Tanju Baga Secondary School was singing Chan Mali Chan. Right, right. right. Oh. And that was Tanju Baga Secondary School. And now we move on to Maju Primary singing. Hey you, hey Jude, whatever. Wait, well, you uh, need four people to do this. Yes. <laughs> you need to have the four <laughs> ethnic, yeah. the four, four oh. cultures. Yeah. Oh. Since, 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 right, yeah. 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 So it's the Indian, the Chinese, the Malay, right, the others, right? right. right? Mm. Um, so what happened was when I was hosting that time, <laughs> I was still Greenhorn. What I noticed was that the uh, crowd, uh, the photographers went to the middle of the field in the old stadium and they turned around to take pictures of the audience. Mm. I went off script. I suddenly grabbed the microphone and said, hey, everybody, look, there's photographers on the ground. Wave your hands in the air like hell. The crowd comes, <gasps> hmm. like, why? You say hell. Oh. <laughs> it's the Hopa Villa. The Hopa Villa. Villa. <laughs> 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 and then I thought, okay, this is my first and my last ending. <laughs> but then in the post-mortem, the general uh, in the committee said, hey, come here, that was interesting. Uh, people got really riled, mm. riled up and all that. That's good. Mm. Can we do more of that? I said, sure. Uh, can you get on stage? I said, sure, if you give me a longer microphone cable. Because <laughs> it was very short. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, army being army, right? Army being army took two weeks to recognize it. <laughs> so we went to the, so the center of the stage and we started doing, hey, this side, hello, hello, hello. Then, uh, then call me back again. And then every year we try to top the year before oh. until one year decided, okay, now how can we top the last year? And I said, how about we four MCs go to the field Mm. be on the ground mm. and then each of us take a sector because it was always red, blue, yellow, green sector. Mm. And then we each have our team and we can you know, fight against your side, your side fight against my yeah. side, oh. get them all going, you know. Because people are coming earlier and earlier and earlier yeah. to trope see, get a good angle. <laughs> yeah. Standard. They sit down there, do nothing, you see. You hear mm. the music play, that's all. So the committee thought we have to entertain them. We need to get the, the MCs out there and then get them going and, and mm. playing and having fun. And this is wow. something that you adopted from live shows. Because like I, I've been to live productions and before the actual show begins, they have somebody like that come up and- Like a warm up, warm up yeah, like a warm yeah. No, no, this was just, I don't know where it was the inspiration from, but right. it just felt yeah. the right thing to do. Like. Right, right, because right. everyone was just sitting there yeah. awkwardly yeah. and then it's like- yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then what happened was that because we were on the floor in the field, right? We're no more close like that. In, in, in the past, it was like, hey, can you take the second line? And I right. Mm. But now we are like, cannot, right? So we had to requisite one microphone uh, year, year piece so that the show caller can call us and tell us, hey, next queue, 20 seconds less. So we cut somebody's line. Mm. Then I say, okay, but how do I tell you? So I had another microphone here, only for wow. me and him, oh. and me and the oh. other three MCs. Then I said, yeah. okay, hey, uh, Adrian, uh, you cut your line and then uh, Joachim, you take the other line and then I'll end off yeah. and then we do the next uh, item. Oh, wow. right, right, right. Or we are told, hey, guys, we've got too much time now. We've got extra one minute. Okay, okay, mm. we'll, we'll play something. Uh, guys, let's do a kalang wave. Okay, so we do. <laughs> we can't yeah. wait for one minute. Yeah, hey, that yeah. works. Oh, no, 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 some years there's just a, like too many Kalang waves. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 nah. yeah. There's some years that the Kalang waves didn't want to stop. Yeah. We start, oh. hey, what are you going to do? They're not stopping! <laughs> <laughs> then we just introduce the next item, then they will. They will, they will. What, what do you like most about NDP? Oh, personally? we just had a talk with my, my little one, 13, uh, she's 11 years old. I My favorite is the uh, uh, Red Lions. Mm. Oh. Uh, the. Uh, Finale medley, because that's when you hear 60,000 yeah. people. I tear, my hair stand, and then the, the fire looks. Wow. It's just, it's it's a different kind of concert. It's a different kind of arena that no other place allows you to have that experience as a host. Mm. So if you get a chance to host NDP, you, you'll you know what I'm talking about. Joachim actually also shared with us that because he grew up in a mixed household, right? And I think his identity and trying to fit in especially in his younger years in school and all that was mm. a very big part of uh, why he loves Singapore so much. Because mm. at the end of the day, when people are asking him, 
uh, so what are you? A uh, moron. Why you realize he's a moron? Don't watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what he realized, he felt comfortable saying in the end was, oh, I'm a Singaporean. Lo. Yeah. And I wonder right. whether you relate to that as well. Definitely. I think Singapore is a very unique culture. And that's why I've always been fighting for Singlish. Mm. While, you know, the other parties are saying, no, if Singlish is a bit too accress. It's a bit too, you know, mm. let's, let's speak this Queen's English. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fact that you use the word accress. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, I don't no, know what sorry. that means. I also don't know. I just use it. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody knows what that means. <laughs> But I always felt that Singlish was what really was endearing about us. And to do a parallel, I mean, this could be a a lousy analogy. You know, for the longest time, the the black hip hop rapper will look down because they can't speak proper English and at their own terms, door, what's up, shorty, don't something, right? Mm. But because they pursued it so well, they owned it, right? Mm. Not everybody wants to be like them, Mm. wants to speak like them. Right, Eminem is a white guy, but he sounds like a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I say, if they can do that, why can't we? Because I think that celebrates our fantastic culture. That that, that amalgamation. You know, in my our father and grandfather days, they were forced to learn each other's language. Otherwise, we couldn't get along. We couldn't mm. communicate. We couldn't work mm. at the dock. The uncle. The, uh, Pachi, the Anne, and all that, carrying the flour, what have you, from the ferry boat to land, they had to talk a mixture of each other's language so mm. that we can get by mm. and, and do our work. And not just get by, but actually say, hey, okay, good job. You know, we're, we're good. We're all doing this for our nation and for our families. Mm. Everybody got along, mm. right? Mm. But now that you want to do this, no do Singlish, you're actually doing the opposite. I mean, all this every year we try to do this, you know, let's be together, one nation, one nation, one nation. You already have Singlish. That is what that makes us one nation. Mm. But they just didn't want to, they didn't see the value in it. Yeah. Was mm. it confusing for you, especially when you were doing Pachukang, right? Mm. Because he speaks so much Singlish and after yeah. that having to switch to doing hosting yeah. in with proper <laughs> English. <laughs> No, I think I want to speak like him. I can speak one. After that, I can change and then become the English sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very, it's very uh, second nature now. Because yeah. uh, I've done so many, I'm still doing him. Mm. That is yeah. all right. I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hello. So actually, how does that happen? I, I think self love. And how he put on the wig that he like. PCK almost did not go on air. Low class, press, not speak English properly. Thousands of people start to go around to go oh, backstage. Wow. And then I realized, hey, somebody took my mode. <laughs> <laughs> I never have been able to say Happy New Year to my family. Do you really want my autograph now? My mother's dying. I was in ICU. He said, Mr. Singh, uh, not only do you pass out, your heart stopped. <gasps> oh, oh gosh.